This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It has been far too long since we have gotten to discuss basketball, talk some hockey, and what better time than with baseball having just a six-game slate for today than to bring back Tom Avecchio to break down his favorites NBA and NHL bets for today. I'll talk some NASCAR at Bristol Dirt later on. It is a fun day with a 14-game slate in the NHL as well to talk about some other sports. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for number fire joined here as mentioned by tom vecchio check him out on twitter at dfs underscore tom we're to break down nba and nhl betting with tom tom chaotic time of year for you with baseball going so you do baseball stuff too nba nhl playoffs on the horizon so how are you doing today i'm doing good yeah it's a super busy time overlap season of three different sports as we also see in the fall uh, really interesting final few days of the NBA season with the Western Conference completely wide open and like, you know, seven teams fighting for a handful of spots, but I'm ready to go. Ready to go, ready to break it all down. We will be talking about the NBA first, and we'll talk about NHL for that, and then transitioning to NASCAR at the end. But for, before we do that, though, a quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast, because this podcast does go up every weekday, breaking down MLB. We have some UFC tomorrow, tomorrow with Austin Swain. I'll talk baseball then as well with more games on the slate. Uh, we got PGA each week again. We've got NFL draft stuff coming up all right here in the same feeds. So if you want to get the best odds as a as we're recording this as it goes up make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts now tom just a couple of games left in the nba regular season and i know it's like from a dfs perspective that makes me nervous gives me the heebie-jeebies because i get worried that things will be less predictable does that impact your willingness to bet? Like, do you lower the amount you bet at this time of year versus not maybe not your unit size, but like the number of bets you have on a given night? Or do you feel good about your ability to read a situation well? I think it's a combination of both. And, you know, you asked this question yesterday uh, to us, like, you know, what are the list of teams that, you know, given yesterday's slates, like what are the list of teams that have motivation to play? And, you know, at this point in the season, that's what I'm looking at every night of what yeah. kind of combinations of games do we have where it's both teams that have, you know, clear motivation to play. It's maybe it's one or it's no, or, you know, it's neither team that have motivation. And that impacts a whole lot. And we have pretty good examples of all three options on tonight's slate. So when we have teams that have clear motivation to play, it's like, okay, as I've said before on this, it's like, okay, this is not the time for teams to be messing with the rotations, which means we should see very consistent production we should see very uh i would say high highly accurate projections of those players of what we're going to be seeing from their stat lines and then on the opposite end like if you are uncertain about things as we could be with the nuggets and the suns tonight this is where you could potentially side with some unders or simply stay away i think staying away is always a good option personally i'd rather make no bet than a bad bet so right. that's the reason i asked the question is like you know I tend to be a bit more conservative in this regard where I am, if I don't have a good read on it, I'm okay just sitting out. Right. Uh, but it sounds like you kind of will go that way as well. It just kind of like judging a case by case. If you don't like something, you'll just sit out and go elsewhere. That's the nice thing about this overlap season. Do you have NHL? You've got MLB you can turn to too. Is that dynamic in play for NHL as well? Or is it mostly prevalent, prevalent in the NBA? It, it's, I would say it's even more so in the NHL just because the it's absolutely different when the teams pick up two points or one point, like that is a huge determining factor in, yeah. instead of just wins. So in the NHL, I am, I am very heavy on teams that are in the mix lately or like yeah. need to secure can clinch a spot. You know, they have a game in hand and they're, you know, they're one point ahead and they have a game in hand. Like this is a huge game for them, those types of things. Yeah. So that's where I'm looking a lot in the NHL these past few days. Yeah, so motivation matters a lot for both. So make sure you're accounting for that, both with the bets you make, but also the bets you decide whether you want to make in actuality. Let's begin things off with the NBA here and talk about a couple of national TV games for tonight. We have got the Heat and the 76ers, the Nuggets and the Suns. You mentioned the Nuggets and Suns as being one where might not have the best to read. Uh, so when you look at those two games, Tom, anything you like in those or are they stay aways for you? 
So I'll use the Nuggets and the Suns as an example, and then I do have one pick for the Heat and the 76ers. So last night, the Memphis Grizzlies lost, which means the the Denver Nuggets have clinched the number one. They went to OT and they got blown out. I had plus five. It was sick. Love it. (laughs) So the Nuggets are 100% locked into the number one seed. And Nicole Jokic played in the Nuggets' most recent game, but he missed, I think it was three games prior to that. And also Jamal Murray's list has questionable tonight. So there is literally zero reason for the Nuggets to play any of their starters tonight. They have zero motivation. Now, the Suns technically have a little bit of motivation, but even with that said, if the Nuggets are going to be rolling out there an entire B team, does this have me leaning on Durant unders, Devin Booker unders, just because they're not going to have to play into the fourth quarter? Why would you push Durant, who's already dealt with multiple injuries this year, He doesn't need to play 38 minutes. He can play 23. They just kind of stay in the rhythm of things. So we we get to this point where we have one team that has some motivation if things fall their way, but then the other team has zero motivation. Ultimately, it's probably just unders or stay away completely because there's no reason to be going to a bad uh, or a bet you're uncertain about. Yeah. Are you feeling yourself staying away from this one or are there unders you want to target? It sounds like it's probably just to stay away, but are there unders you, you like here or no? Uh, well, you know, I would wait for the player props to be posted because we're waiting yeah. on the point. So I would, if the lines, I if Booker and Durant have both been awesome as of late and they've both been yeah. very effective. So I think their lines are slightly inflated. So yeah. if we saw Booker's line at 33 or 34 and a half points, I would take the under. If that, and if it's not there, if it's at 30, 30 points or 29, I would just simply stay away. Okay. So check those once they're up. They might be pretty delayed just based on the way this game breaks down. But also West Coast. Right. West Coast as well. So once we get gate or get numbers up for that, as far as the player props go, maybe check into those for some unders on the bigger players. Other game as mentioned is the Heat and the 76ers. Right now, this spread is three and a half in favor of the 76ers. What's your read on this one, Tom? So this one is we know that the Miami Heat have full motivation to play. They are locked in. They, well, they're not locked in. They're right now currently in the seven seed. So in the NBA, seven, eight, nine, ten play in the play in tournament, which is survive in advance, and then you're actually into the playoffs. Right now, they are two games behind the Brooklyn Nets for the sixth seed. And it's a chance that the Heat, if they win out and the Nets lose, whatever it is, they can move up to the sixth seed. And obviously, that's a much easier path to being locked in. So the Heat, full uh, motivation to play tonight at play and win. The 76ers. They uh, have very, very slight motivation. So, again, a little bit hesitant on that. So I'm leaning towards the Heat, and I'm leaning towards Jimmy Butler over 35.5 points, rebounds, assists combined. It's sitting up minus 120. He is going up against his former team, which is great to have a nice little revenge. But Jimmy Butler, more importantly, is a player that can get it done in multiple areas and is a player that can consistently push towards a triple-double given the fact that he can be so effective and efficient when he's on the court with the peripheral stat categories outside of pure scoring. And again, with the Heat having full motivation, he's going to be out there for his 35, 38 some odd minutes. And ultimately, if we do see Embiid sit, which I do not think is out of the realm of possibility, he's currently not listed as questionable or anything. He's not on the injury report, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that he does sit tonight, given the fact where the 76ers are in the standings. That would make things much easier for the Heat and thus putting Butler in a great spot. So right now, as you mentioned, uh, the PRA bet for Butler over 35 and a half is minus 120. Uh, the spread is three and a half. You said they were both leans. Does that mean, is there something that could get you to bite on those? No, or... I'm, I'm full war with Jimmy Butler. Okay, so, the Butler is... one you're good with. Yeah. Over 35 and a half uh, minus 120. Yes, I would lean okay. with the 76ers. I, and excuse me, I would lean with the Heat because of their motivation factor. And the 76ers are lower on like the totem pole of, of motivation. Right. Okay. So keep an eye on that spread there. Maybe there's some value later on, but the Butler points plus rebounds plus assist market uh, over 35 and a half minus 120 is one that Tom does like. Couple other games across the NBA for tonight, Tom. When you look at those, as we have spots, maybe there is some high motivation or more clear situations. Which bets are you liking now there? Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder at the Utah Jazz. The Thunder are holding down the 10th seed right now. Technically, the Jazz are still alive in the 12th seed. They're not yet eliminated, but it's obviously a much difficult path for them to jump into the play-in. The OKC Thunder are are holding down a play-in spot right now. They have full motivation to play. This game has a slate high 238 over-under. 
both teams are in the top 10 of the league when it comes to offensive pace. Both teams aren't particularly good on defense, which means what? We're going to see a lot of points. We're going to see a lot of scoring, a lot of back and forth action. And ultimately, I like Josh Giddy over six and a half assists. That's setting up even money plus 100. He's the, you know, kind of second, uh, you know, second player in usage behind Shea Gilgis Alexander for OKC. You know, consistent player dishing the ball out and just given this game environment, the back and forth nature, there's going to be a lot of shot attempts. And that really does put Giddy in a great spot to rack up these assists as it's, you know, as you can see at plus 100, it's not a massive uh, number, but it's obviously very, very in line and correlates with the game market with a team that has full motivation to play and win. Yeah. Again, that number six and a half is even money on Josh Giddy for the assists in this one. That's for the Thunder at the Jazz. Anything else you like for uh, Thursday night in the NBA, Tom? Uh, no, it's, you know, yeah. we have a matchup of Portland and San Antonio, two teams that are completely out of it. Uh, not really wanting to go there in, in terms of that the Cavaliers are locked into the four seed and they have decided to sit all of their starters. They have literally all five of their starters, including, you know, a couple of bench players just fully sitting out. Right. So I'm not going to, you know, going with them from a fantasy perspective is a completely different story, but sure. from betting not on board with, uh, with those two games. The luxury of that, Tom, is we have 14 games in the NHL. So let's shift over there now and talk about the NHL for tonight. Again, 14-game slate. That is bananas. When you look at those 14 games, let's start with the traditional markets. What are your favorite bets for Thursday at FanDuel Sportsbook? One would be the Buffalo Sabres money line, minus 118 at the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, solid spot for Buffalo. They're technically alive in the uh, Eastern Conference Playoff pick of the wild card picture. Uh, it's obviously a slim chance. More importantly, Detroit has been playing, I would say, above their level the past few games. Uh, the Sabres probably should have their new goaltender, Devin Levy, in net. He was recent, uh, he's only played two NHL games, finished his season out at Northeastern. They signed him to his contract. He was arguably one of the best goaltenders in the NCAA this year. He is now uh, one and one in his NHL day, uh, NHL first two games. Uh, again, Detroit's not a good team. They've been playing above their head, and the Sabres are a better team. It's nearly even money for a team that does have motivation to play and win. Granted, it's a very slim chance that they do make the playoffs, but still motivation is there. Slim chance is still a chance. And right. for the playoffs, that's the highest motivation you can have. So even if it is a slim chance, like there was an NFL team, the Packers, you know, they had a slim right. chance basically the entire stretch run last year. And until, I mean, the final game, that motivation was there and I'm okay taking shots on a chance to make the playoffs because teams are going to treat that as they have full motivation. So to me personally, I think that works as being full motivation there. So that's the Sabres money line against the rest minus 118, the straight up money line there. Right. What else is seeing the traditional market? Tom? The hurricanes visiting the predators under five and a half at minus one Oh four. These are two very good defensive teams. Uh, with the, the Canes and the Preds, two very good defensive teams. More importantly, they have been horrible on offense as of late. And this is not something I've probably ever said about Carolina. Over the past few years, Carolina has been awesome on offense, constantly pushing the pace in terms of shot attempts, you know, Corsi 4, all these things I always like to talk about. But over the past month, both of these teams are in the bottom four of the league for the fewest goals scored per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations. Zero offense from them. Uh, and for the Predators, it's largely due to injuries where they're missing their best defender. They're missing, you know, two of their top forwards. You know, I talked about the, the Predators right around when I was here for the deadline where they traded away a bunch of players. And they have yeah. players, you know, on their roster that I've never heard of, which is kind <laughs> of crazy to talk about. Not to mention the fact that they still have UC Soros in it, who's one of the best goaltenders in the league. So they have this consistent defense. They just can't score. And then for the Canes, they've always had consistent defense. They've also kind of been hit with injuries where – one of their best goal scorers or arguably their best goal scorer, Andrei Sveshnikov, uh, is out for the year with an ACL injury, you know, three, four weeks ago. Not surprised to see their offense decline. And the Hurricanes still need to secure their number one seed in the division to give them home ice because the Devils are very close behind them. And the Devils have a very soft matchup at home tonight versus the Blue Jackets. So it's the kind of situation where the Canes should be winning this game just because the Preds are not a good team. Yeah. And they're probably going to be able to shut them down on defense. 
Yeah. So that under five and a half goals is minus 104. Uh, the money line for the Hurricanes, minus 176. That is, you know, not nothing, especially in a low scoring game. Um, so I understand why you're looking more towards the total here under five and a half at minus 104 for that one. What about player props in the NHL, Tom? What are you seeing there for tonight? Well, speaking of the Devils, as I said, they have a very soft matchup going to their best player, Jack Hughes, over one and a half points. It's sitting at plus 102. His goal prop, as you will see, if you, you click on goal prop quickly for uh, Jack Hughes. So I, I like his points. His goal prop yeah. is minus 125, <laughs> which is a, as you can tell, that implies what? A, he's very good, and B, the matchup is awesome. Yeah. Now, over the past month, the Blue Jackets, they're having 5.02 goals against per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations that last in the league. They're arguably the worst team in the league, and they're you know racing towards the bottom to get this top prospect, Connor Bedard. And as I said, the Devils, they still have motivation because they can, yeah. A, catch the Hurricanes, and B, they still also need to secure the number two seed so the Rangers can't catch them behind them. So the Devils have motivation on both sides to right. try and take the number one seed, but also not try and get caught. Awesome matchup. And, you know, frankly, Hughes has been slightly underproducing, at least from my expectation over the past few games. And he's too good of a player to not have, you know, a, a, a good finish to the season, especially with some of these soft matchups coming up. And I will say the Devils also need to be very cognizant of the Rangers because the Rangers have a winnable matchup tonight against St. Louis. And then the Rangers play at the Blue Jackets, another winnable matchup on Saturday. So that's that could be four points for the Rangers who are right behind the Devils. Right. So this is all about motivation for a number of different teams. So Hughes is clearly one of the focal points for the Devils. Do we see ice time increase for focal points like that when motivation is as high as it is for New Jersey tonight? Absolutely. And one of the things you'll hear is, if you're listening to NHL games, watching NHL games, you'll hear uh, you know, the, the announcers say, oh, uh, their top line is going to be double shifted okay. uh, to end the you know, from the final 12 minutes of the, the third period, whatever it is, where instead of rolling four lines deep, you know, and, and just going through the, you know, the rotation of the, you find getting out there, they'll go like one, two, three, back to one. Yeah. And they're going to take that extra shift. They're going to get an extra, you know, minute of ice time here or there, which does add up. Right. So, so that helps Hughes too, uh, especially it, it, if it's points, uh, just total points as opposed right. to goals. Uh, Hughes over one and a half points is plus 102. As Tom mentioned, the goal score prop minus 125 for Hughes. But this is a way to get a little bit extra on that over for Hughes. What other player props stand out to you across Thursday night? So tonight's slate is really interesting because we're dealing with a variety of different teams that have varying levels of motivation. Yeah, where two teams that have nothing to play for, two teams that have a ton to play for. One of my favorite props is going to be Miko Rantanen for the Colorado Avalanche. And the, it's it's a tough spot because he's at 49 goals this year. I think he can get to 50. This is obviously an extremely easy matchup for him to do so. I obviously don't like the goal prop sitting at minus 120. Yeah. Same thing with Hughes. So it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to go to him over one and a half points, which is sitting at plus 100. So, so that's in uh, the Avalanche versus Sharks game. Right. And, and total points for him. It's a little bit higher up. Oops. I scrolled for past it. <laughs> Miko Rantanen. There we go. Same situation. The, yeah. the Avs, another team locked into an extremely tight battle in the Central. They could very easily win that division. They are going up against the Sharks, who they beat uh, two nights ago, also in St. Louis. No travel for them, so they are good to go. And... I think Rantanen is always a threat to put up a hat trick as he's sitting on 49 goals, which is the top five of the league. I expect him to get to 50. Very easy match against the Sharks, who opted not to play defense this year. It's all good for the Avalanche, another team with high priority to play and win. And the Avalanche have been a very good team to you recently. So Mika Rantanen over one and a half points is even money at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, so the two player props here, uh, Rantanen over one and a half points, even money. And Jack Hughes over one and a half points, plus 102. Canes Predators under five and a half, minus 104. And the Sabres money line at minus 118. Any final thoughts for you, Tom, before we close up shop on your end for today? Yeah, my final thought is that... We're going to see multiple home runs from the Rockies going up against Josiah Gray from the Nationals today. Uh, Ryan McMahon, plus 450. I know the weather is not full Coors for today. Um, I'm not sure. Run out in Sportsbook, if I can ran for a second, typically sucks. Um, no shade at them. People who've worked there, you're cool. But 
usually I can't get better numbers there than Otherware, and I can on McMahon. So I Were know the... the weather stinks, but plus 450 for a dinger, I think I I took a couple guys. In that who, game. who are the lowest on the Rockies? Like, what are the lowest? Uh, is so I, I took Jerks and Profar, but that's because I am a sucker for Profar. Jerks and Gofar. Um, it's either him or, or Hassan Kim that you're always going to be betting on. No, I, I, Hassan Kim was a one-time thing. I, I got Lane Thomas at plus 850 <laughs> against a lefty. I know Freeland's like, you know, okay. not terrible, but yeah. uh, Profar 7-1, to one, McMahon plus 450, and Blackman plus 750. So who, who, I assume, what are I've the lowest? Today. What's, what's uh, the ones about 300-ish? Who is? McMahon, what, McMahon's 360. Um, he's not the lowest. I believe Crone. Crone's plus 285 Yeah, right now. but Multiple home runs is the answer. Um, I did take four separate ones, so I'm clearly <laughs> on board <laughs> Like I, my in my brain, whenever I'm betting like longer odds things, I I associate it with outrights and NASCAR where I can only win once. I'm like, okay, I got to be more limited, you know, because I can't okay. have these bets that can't cash simultaneously. But for home run bets, we're good to go, baby. Uh, so, so is that a strategy you obviously have to use to mitigate where you could say if I bet on three, at least one of them hits, I'll still be profitable? Is that like a no? I I I am very reserved when it comes to outrights. Okay. Um, I'm max at three. Um, maybe for Daytona, I can swing a fourth just because I have like months to look at these odds and I get impatient. Um, but <laughs> usually I will not go more than three because I hate having bets where I can't cash at the same time. Makes sense. So it's it's a personal preference. I know people do more outrights than I do, and that's fine. If you're good at them, I know that my strength is more so in top 10 bets, but uh, that's the way I play things. But for home run bets... A lot of Rockies, a couple yeah. nationals for today, too. What could go wrong? And a 50 degree game at Coors Field, right. not even full Coors. <laughs> All righty, that is Tom Vecchio. Find his work over at numberfire.com. Check him out for a couple more days on the Daily ISO on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Tom, I appreciate the time. Good luck to you and a massive slate in the NBA and NHL for tonight. Thanks for having me. All righty, find Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. And again, check out his work over at Number Fire. Speaking of NASCAR, we'll dive into what I'm seeing for the Bristol Dirt Race and the Truck Series and the Cup Series in just one segment. First, Grand Slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there is no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the play with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Sign up. Place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700, or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text open y And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, in NASCAR for this week, it is the Bull Dirt Race. If you don't know, that it is the one dirt race they have each year in the NASCAR Cup Series. It is at Bristol. It'll be run on Easter. and I'm going to slow play things again this week where I'm not betting any outrights as of right now. And it's not because there's a lack of value. I actually show a lot of value on a couple different guys, but it's because practice here is super, super valuable. There are two sessions. Typically, there's just one practice session. Both these practice sessions are on Friday night. So two sessions. And it's such a different track type than what we typically get. So current form matters less here than it does other spots. I still care about current form, but it matters a bit less. Last year's practice portion of my model 
kick the butt of the current form in the track history segments. So we're both about to get more valuable info, and the info we have isn't as good as usual. So I want to take things a bit slower here and allow myself the flexibility to add outrights after practice on Friday. There are still a couple of bets I like. Those are Ty Gibbs and Eric Jones to finish inside the top 10. Gibbs is plus 380 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Jones, 10 to 1. Gibbs is a guy my numbers have been high on all year. You've heard that name plenty of times on the show, and it's been working out recently. He had three straight top 10s. I bet him a top 10 for two of those three. I was not on him last week. I had about even, it was pretty even with the implied odds there. So I didn't take him, but he did finish top 10 there. Now, for Gibbs, this is his first time running the Bristol Dirt Race and Cup, and he's run Xfinity, but they don't run the dirt race there. But Gibbs did run dirt in the ARCA series. He ran, I believe, four different dirt races, uh, three in Springfield and one in Coin. So he ran four different dirt races, at least from what I can find. And he was runner up in the two he ran in 2021, which was his, I think his age, that would have been his age 18 season. So in his good season in ARCA, he did run well on those two dirt tracks. Now it's worth mentioning a runner up for Gibbs that year in ARCA was worse than his typical result because he won half those races. So he was not a plus on dirt. This is not a Ty Gibbs on dirt type situation, but he at least has experience. I think that's enough. I have Gibbs at 29.8% to finish top 10. His implied odds are 20.8%. So a decent little gap there. I think that's a big enough gap for me to feel good about Ty Gibbs. So Ty Gibbs plus 380, decent bet based on my numbers. As far as Jones goes, uh, 10 to 1, I have more minimal value there. He's at 10% in my model versus 9.1% implied. But I personally feel pretty good about Jones because there's a lot of uncertainty here where he could practice well. He also finished inside the top 10 in the first dirt race at Bristol in the Cup Series, uh, finished in the top 10 one of the stages too, so a good race overall for him there. In the Truck Series, Jones actually did sit on the pole for one of his two Eldora races, Eldora the Mud Summer Classic, if you are a Truck Series fan, always pretty fun one uh, to watch. He did sit on the pole for one of those races. Uh, he got the pole by winning his heat race, where he was racing against Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson. Larson always among the favorites to win on dirt. So a very impressive run there for Jones in his heat race. Led 24 laps in the feature, had an issue, didn't finish well, but he was pretty fast. He finished fourth in his second Eldora race. So I just like Jones the driver. I think 10 to 1 is a lot in what could be a chaotic race, especially for a driver who has had some success on dirt. So I like Jones more between the two, between him and Ty Gibbs, even though my model shows less value there. So in the Cup Series, I like Ty Gibbs plus 380, Eric Jones 10 to 1 to finish inside the top 10. In the Truck Series, I am willing to bet an outright. It's because I have a better read on the Truck Series on dirt because they run more races. They've been running dirt for a while, that dating back to Eldora, uh, past couple years, both Bristol and Knoxville. So I feel better about getting a read on the trucks on dirt and the outright I like most for the truck series is William Byron seven to one. I also have value on Joey Logano at five to one, but the value is bigger on Byron. I am willing to add Logano if he's fast in practice, but I think that I think Byron's a better bet as of right now. I think looking at these odds, it seems like this race is being modeled as being more chaotic than it, it typically is. The two races at Bristol and Knoxville last year were Somewhat predictable, not a super high incident rate. I had Todd Gilliland, another cup driver, uh, winning in Knoxville. He won there. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. in the Bristol dirt race back in 2021 dominated that race. So we do see cup drivers run well in these truck series dirt races. Byron is in good equipment. He's an Aspire truck. He won Martinsville from the back of the field in Aspire truck last year. Logano's in a Thor Sport truck. They are among the best team in the trucks, among the best teams in the truck series. So I'm a bit confused why their odds are so long. I have both them pretty well above their implied odds. If you wanted to bet Logano at five to one and Byron at seven to one, I would not push back on it because Logano did win the uh, first cup series race at Bristol. I will stick with Byron at seven to one right now, but you do have leeway to do a bit more if you want. 
As far as top fives go in the truck series, uh, you can find these at William Hill. I like Grant Enfinger at plus 275 and Parker Kligerman at plus 350, where you can find those. Both those pretty good values by my numbers. But Byron at FanDuel Sportsbook, my favorite bet at 7-1. to one. So to recap, NASCAR at Bristol Dirt, I've got value on Ty Gibbs, plus 380 to finish in the top 10 in the Cup Series. Eric Jones, 10-1 to 1 top 10 in Cup as well. Got William Byron, 7-1 to 1 in the Truck Series. You could add Logano, 5-1 to 1 if you want. And then also for top fives elsewhere, I do like Grant Enfinger, plus 275, and Parker Kligerman at plus 350. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Check out the Daily ISO on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast. You can find Tom's work over at Number Fire. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow, talking about a big UFC slay with Austin Swain. I'll talk about some baseball as well. Should be a fun one. We'll talk to all of you then. Good luck with your bets across today. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> 